April Childers, welcome to Empower Network TV. Thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. How excited you're here. Dream bigger, like, right? Dream bigger. Were we talking about that? So we're, you know, who, first of all, are you in the U.S.? You are in the U.S., right? Are you on the West Coast? I am in the U.S. I'm in Tennessee. Oh, in Tennessee. That's right. That's right. Tennessee. Okay. The, the heartland, one of the heartland states. Beautiful. Now, so you're coming to us from Tennessee. You, you know, you chose the title as Dream Bigger and you got Dream Bigger. The other two are Dream Bigger. Live Bigger and serve bigger serve bigger okay now you started in the military so, but we're, are we going to go further back than that to start where does your story start um well we probably do need to go bigger or further back than that because let's do I it joined, i didn't join the military till i was 28 years old okay the navy okay well where does your story start april i want to hear it uh, well, I grew up in Louisiana and uh, with my grandparents, and I went to live with my mom when I was 15 in Texas. And at 17, I decided that I didn't need to be told what to do <laughs> by my mom. So I moved out and um, moved to Houston when I was 17, quit my senior year of high school, and um, and I didn't really, you know, you don't, you never really quit your senior year. You're like, oh yeah, I'm going to move and I'll go back to school. <laughs> well, then you live out on your own and you, re you realize that, um, well, maybe I don't have time to go back to school. So I just got a full-time job and worked. And uh, it really wasn't an issue until I decided years later to go to college. And I was like, oh, I guess I need a high school diploma. <laughs> So I like to do things out of order, you know, strong willed, and, clearly strong willed. Yes. Strong willed, hard headed, you know, sometimes maybe a little slow, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I get there. Um, then after living in Houston for about five years, I moved to Louisiana, uh, to Baton Rouge, lived there for another uh, five years or so, and then uh, joined the Navy at 28 years old. Wow. So yeah. you're coming in later than most. That would be later than most, right? Yeah. Yeah. What was it like to be a senior to a lot of them? Because the officers, were the officers even 28? Uh, most of them, no. <laughs> my first ship, but I had, um, yeah, my officer was, oh, he might have been 25 and he looked like he was about 14. So yeah, I had, I had fun with him. I just loved harassing him. He was fun. <laughs> amazing a lot a lot of the officers were not you know and it's it was a little aggravating because you'd pull into ports and officers there were certain rules for officers and i'm like look these kids are younger than i am i you know really i have to be in by midnight dad i mean so yeah it took a little adjusting and how many years did you spend in the navy then 28 till 20 you spent 20 years in the navy okay I I did. <laughs> oh, you were a lifer, basically, right? Uh, I, I, yes. Yeah. It was funny because when I went in originally, uh, when I talked to the recruiter, I said, I want you to find me a job in the Navy that I can do in the civilian world if I don't like it, you know? And he's like, oh, okay. So, um, yeah, that's I because I didn't really know if I'd like it, you know? And I mean, nobody really knows because you don't really know what to expect. You don't know what you don't know. So, um, yeah, I, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. So you would just re up every time you were, your is it two or four? You just re up for another two or four years, or how does it work? Well, I originally went in because my school was like a year long, almost a year long. I had to sign up for six years initially, and uh, so at um, at six years, you know, you can re-enlist or you can, and sometimes it depends on how you transfer and everything else. Sometimes you have to re-up to get new orders or, so yeah, at, at 10 years, 10 years is kind of like that stop or go, you know, am I staying or am I going? And, and I considered going, but I didn't really have anything to go to. And uh, the military is full of people who don't know what we want to be when we grow up. So we just stay, you know, it's like I can stay here, be a kid, play. You work hard, you play hard. And, um, you know, 
that was fun. Been just about all the way around the world. That's an attractive lifestyle for, you know, people that like that adventure, but structure, but adventure and play. There's a lot of benefits to it. I could totally, I'm from Canada. We don't have really the military you guys have at all, but I'm always fascinated when I hear vets talk about their experience. And obviously there's a lot of trauma too, that certain, you know, yeah. people go through, which is horrible, but there's also this really, as you're saying, the, the fun play elements, which can be wonderful for exploit. So how many countries have you seen? Oh God. <laughs> well, you're in the Navy. So you're on what type of ship were you on? Or multiple? I was on, my first ship was a cruiser, uh, which uh, is a smaller ship. And then I was on, my last ship was a destroyer. Um, my most unusual boat was a catamaran that uh, the army did with the navy it was a special project and i did a very old ship in the uh when i was stationed in guam it was a sub tender so um it was one of the oldest ships in the navy a sub tender so you're literally are you accompanying the sub are you refueling the sub they're nuclear so what would you be doing in the sub tender we worked on them Oh, you worked on them, like mechanically outside, you would work on the gears from outside? Uh, outside and inside. I mean, okay. it depends on, they would, uh, if they needed uh, work done on them, they would do like, uh, they put in requests, we would do up packages, because when you're dealing with subs, there's, of course, a lot of um, uh, particulars you know it has to be everything has to be just so 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 you'd have to actually do work packages up on them and they uh, I was in Guam at the time and they'd come in and spend anywhere between a few weeks to a few months being of uh, whatever work they needed done no we didn't refuel because they they are nuclear nuclear but uh, we did uh, one of the because you worked in different areas of the of the ship and on the subs. And one of the things we did was we worked on the mast, which, you know, the the thing you see in the movies that go up and they look through. <laughs> we so would actually like the periscope periscope, what are they called? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. And we'd actually pull those things out of the sub. And then you could get in, you know, the workers would get in inside and do whatever kind of work. But yeah, that was, that was cool. <laughs> that sounds extremely cool. So what kind of job did you have that would transfer into everyday civilian life? What were you? I was an electronics technician. Uh, we oh. worked on communication and the radar equipment on the ships and stuff. Oh, well, yeah, that'll totally transfer probably different systems, but your knowledge base would be completely. Yeah, electronics and electronics. Yeah. Amazing. So did, when you came out of the military 20 years later, did you actually go into that or did you go into co? Okay. So tell us what happened there. No, actually when I, when I did retire, uh, my husband is also, he's actually retired also. And uh, he did 25 years and um, he decided he retired before I did. We'd already bought our property in Tennessee. We were stationed in Virginia. So uh, we would come out, we'd take a week off we'd come out, we'd work on the property. You know, we did a lot of, prep work while we were still active well a friend of ours said oh there's a convenience store for sale you know right on the same exit that we get off so my husband decides that it's a good idea to buy this convenience store I was not that thrilled about it <laughs> <laughs> that's the but, nice way of saying it <laughs> yeah that's a, that's as nice as I can say it uh, but he so we bought it he actually moved to Tennessee 10 months before I retired because we thought, you know, this would be a good overlap. We still got a paycheck coming in. Um, so he moved to Tennessee and ran the store while I was still in Virginia. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd fly in on a weekend or something and spend a weekend with him. But, uh, you know, when you're that close to retirement, you really save your leave. So I didn't want to burn a lot of leave going back and forth. But uh, yeah, so we bought a convenience store and we ran it for, I guess we had it for about two and a half, three years, somewhere around in there. Did you guys have a slushy machine? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but we had, we, you know, we did food, we did, and you'll love this. It was off the Buck Snort exit. 
on Interstate 40 between Nashville and Memphis. And, you know, a lot of you, a lot of listeners, uh, I'm sure, drop me some comments. Comment if you uh, if you've seen the Buck Snort exit off of 40 between Nashville and Memphis. That's and cool. we sold a lot of T-shirts, tank tops, sweatshirts, cups. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. For that area, like for Buck Snort or for Tennessee? For Buck Snort. Everything Buck said Snort. Buck Snort on it. So, yes, people love That's that. Fun. And they wanted to have something that said it. And, you know, where were we at? Oh, we were down in uh, New Orleans for the weekend or something. And uh, we had a Buck Snort. I think my husband had a Buck Snort uh, T-shirt on. And somebody said, I know where that's at. I've been there. <laughs> so, so yeah. Matter- go ahead. Good. Yeah. I was just going to say, so no matter where you're at, you're going to find somebody that, you know, has heard of Buck Snort. So, yeah. And so you run this in Buck Snort. The, ga- the convenience store that your husband goes and buys without talking to you about it. Two oh, and no, a half we talked or- about it. Oh, you did talk about it. Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, I did, just didn't did, agree with it. Did you arm wrestle or what was the final decider? <laughs> uh, no, it was something he wanted to do. So it was yeah. like, okay, if you want to do uh-huh. it. Well, that's nice that you let him have his dream. That's good. It's good. Well, you know, we all have dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened after that? Two and a half years and then what? You sold yeah. it? Uh, we did sell it. Uh, we had a very close friend of ours. Uh, her husband passed away. And um, it was it was just kind of a wake up call. It's like, what are we doing? We got out of the military and we're working harder now than what we ever worked. You know, we could have stayed in the military and not worked this hard because convenience stores are hard. Um, you know, if you're not there, you're thinking about it, you get phone calls in the middle of the night, you hold your breath to, uh, you know, whether the person's going to show up for the next shift um so yeah uh when our friend passed away we're like life's too short this is too much like work so we sold the store and uh my husband's happily retired he has not <laughs> he has not worked since so yeah he went from i want this store to oh i like retirement he cuts a lot of grass you know isn't he but- ca- golfing right now didn't you say he's golfing, he is golfing. Right he yes, is golfing. golfing. Right he's cutting grass and golfing. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, he he's cut grass the last last couple of days. He's cut grass. We have ninety three acres, so Ooh. not all of it is grass, I mean, but okay. in my opinion, too much is grass. <laughs> okay, that's and you're in Tennessee. That's a big that's a big plot. Were you, were you guys stationed in Virginia Beach then? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, that's where I am right now. Um, I'm here at all the, you guys get like all five branches here, don't you have the military? Is um, it four or five? We've got Army, of course, we got Coast Guard, um, well, the Navy, the Marines are out in Damn Uh Yeah. Air Force, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. there should be all okay. of them there. Okay. It's the biggest base in the world. Yeah, it's monster. It just blows yeah. me away how big this is. Yeah. Okay, and so several pieces out there so yeah. but the base yeah. Warfoot is the biggest base in the world okay all right so then we go from the convenience store at buck snort no snort. buck yeah buck snort exit between tennessee and memphis or sorry nashville and memphis exit 40 and then what happens you sell it because now you got a big old acreage so you're happily retired and then you get into what well, um, I, I did a little bit of everything I did. I got involved with a gardening club uh, here in the area because, you know, you got this, we were building our house. So uh, I've got like dirt. I won't even say grass at the time. We just had dirt. So um, I'm a Louisiana girl. I didn't know what grew up here. So I joined a local, took a local gardening class and joined the gardening club. Um for a little while. And then um, I took um, quilting classes because I wanted to learn about quilting. Cause you know, when you're retired, you gotta figure out what you what you really want. And um, then I got, got my real estate license because real estate fascinates me. I think it's a great way to build wealth. Uh, you know, uh, 
like a legacy, a legacy wealth. Um, but I didn't enjoy being a real estate agent. Uh, I, I found out really quick that I enjoy the investor side of real estate much more than I enjoy the, uh, you know, selling of real estate. So uh, while I had my real estate license, I was approached by a direct sales company and which I was not interested in. <laughs> and, you know, she, I did an appointment with her and she was like, oh, you'd be so good at this. I'm like, no, I'm trying to do this real estate thing. And um, we talked a few more times and she told me the business aspect of it. And I was like, you know, I could try. So, you know, because I figured if nothing else, I missed the camaraderie of the military and I wasn't used to really happy women. So these women were really happy, really happy. And I was That's like, hilarious. And I used to happy women. <laughs> this can't be real, you know? So I joined and I absolutely love it. Um, but it was definitely a different world. I mean, that first appointment, I told her, I said, I don't really wear makeup. I, that's not my thing. And, um, you know, I, I just, it's a safe place. It's a happy place. It is fun. So, um, yeah, I've been doing that for this November will be four years. And I've got, I've got a small team. But, um, you know, I've got some wonderful ladies that's on my team and it's fun. <laughs> You're having fun. Your inner kid is having fun. So have you figured out what you're going to be when you grow up yet, April? Uh, no, not really. I'm not sure that I'm going to grow up because, you know, now that I'm, uh, you know, officially retired, I don't have to grow up. So, uh, but I have decided whatever I'm going to do. I'm going to have fun doing it. You know, it's yeah. the, we used to say in the military, you know, if I can't have fun. I don't want to play, take my toys. I'm going home. So <laughs> I'm home. I got yep. my toy. Yeah. I love yeah. that. We were chatting about that before. I got to show everyone my millennium Falcon keychain from star Wars. <laughs> I was showing April because I love star Wars. We were talking about toys and I'm like, you know, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? And you're going to take your toys and go home. So have you ever had to take your toys and go home? Um, you know, adjusting out of the military was, was, um, I hate to say work, but it was, it was definitely an adjustment, you know, because you're used to structure, you're used to, um, being very busy, and luckily, the the store really served a good purpose for me because it helped me transition because I was still busy because we were running the store. Um, so that that definitely helped me. Um, and then since I've been with this uh, direct sales company, like I said, they're very happy. They're very happy. So... <laughs> um, I love how you say that. You're just, it's like, it's so, it's so foreign. They're it, it, so it happy. Is. <laughs> it is. They, they were, I was like, no, this can't, no, people can't be this happy. But what it has allowed me to do is to kind of smooth off some of the rough edges that I had mm -hmm. built in the military. And it's also given me a chance to dream. And it's really just empowered me to the point where I can see myself doing other things. So like now, um, you know, I'm working with, you know, you know, Courtney and Timmy. So I've been working with them. I'm creating courses, wow. uh, I created a journal. Yeah. And wow. I'm just very excited about, you know, using my life experiences to help other women. Wow. Well, Courtney and Timmy are rock stars. They were at, they're in our academy. You know that probably, but they're at our, our live event and they both spoke. And I posted the video in the main group. They did an excellent job, both of them. And I, I'm just impressed with both those ladies are, those women are powerful. Yes. I'm just so thankful they're here. So there you're working with them. So dream big, dream bigger. So you're, you're actively Cause like, it's like your eyes, your inner kid is coming out. It's like, you're starting to sparkle. This is amazing. Well, you know what, when you're doing what you love, it's easy to sparkle. 
of, you yeah. know, and we should leave a little sparkle wherever we go. So if yeah. I can take the things that I've been through in my life and help other women sparkle, I love that. I may have to steal that. Um, Do it. Is, you know, I mean, I, I think that we should leave something behind and what mm -hmm. better thing to leave behind than a little sparkle? Because, yeah, you know, so. there's, there's just so many, so many people um, yeah. out there. And, you know, it's funny, Courtney and I oh, were she... talking uh, just a little while ago and she's like, you know, do you want to focus on people or do you want to focus on women? I said, I want to focus on women. Because, you know, no offense, Amos, but there's a lot of stuff out there for men. There is. And vice you know? versa. There's, yeah. Yeah. There's, it, it's been a man's world for a long time. And yeah. I want to focus on, like, of course, I have a soft spot for female veterans. Um, I have a soft spot for single mom, single mothers, because my mom was a single mom for oh. years. And I watched, you know, I mean, by the time I was the, I'm the youngest of six. So um, by the time I came along and that's one of the reasons my grandparents raised me because my mom raised four boys. And back then, I mean, women weren't paid what they were worth. We're still not, but we're closer, um, you know, and I mean, you're working minimum wage jobs and people, men are being promoted over you. And it's just, you know, I mean, it's a hard life, but something that should be celebrated. And, and these women aren't looking for a hand out. They're looking for a hand up. And, and I think that's part of our responsibility to do that. So you're going to be targeting vets, potentially single moms, that's awesome. Like, seriously, uh, in or out of, I guess if they're in military, it might be challenging to work unless they're on leave, but you can target them after they're out of the military. Well, and even while they're in, because yeah. people don't, I, I can't tell you how many people came into like my office, um, especially my la my very last command, I retired off of shore duty. And I was one of the blocks that they had, because when you check out of the command, there's certain people that you have to check out with. And I was one of those people. And it would always be like, oh, so what are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. It depends on where I get a job. I'm like, really? That's so sad. You don't know where you're, where you're going to live, what you're going to do. You don't have a plan. I mean, did 30 years or 20 years sneak up on you and you didn't do anything to get ready for retirement? You know, they're like, oh, I can't retire. You know, I got kids in college or I got, you know, they're on their second, third wife, whatever. And they've got little kids and they've got a kid in college. I'm like, oh, that's, that's kind of bad planning on your part, buddy. <laughs> so there's a lot that you can work with women while they're in the military to get ready to set themselves up for their next life. Because a lot of these people go in, they're 18 years old. So after 20 years, they're still only 38 years old. Yeah, they get a whole nother, their, their second life, your second life starts at 40 or whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, know? okay, what do I do with your second life? <laughs> yeah. But you should have a plan because retirement, a good retirement just doesn't accidentally happen. You know, I mean, my husband and I, Put a lot of work into being able to be retired and when you tell somebody they're like oh what are you gonna do when you retire i'm i'm gonna be retired they're like oh but aren't you gonna be bored no i don't know how i had time to work i guess <laughs> because but you're able to do stuff that you want to do not that you have to do and there's yeah. a big difference in that you well, can you, follow. Sorry, yeah, keep going, keep going. Well, like we talked about before we went on camera, is having that passion of you know just like what you're doing, to to know in your heart what you want to do and to see that come to fruition is is so rewarding, oh. and you know. But there's so many people that, especially coming out of the military, they've spent 20, 30 years being told what to do, where to go, what to wear. They don't know how to dream. 
and they've lost that. And that's sad, you know, I've had women tell me, well, I don't have dreams for myself. My dreams are for my kids. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, yeah, that's that's sad. That's yeah. Knowing how to play and knowing how to dream. To me, that's what helps maintain my youth is I got to remember to play and I have to remember to dream regardless of what's going on. Don't get too attached to what's going on. But to stay in, okay, acknowledge this is true. This is what's going on. But what could be? What's possible and to play in that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, people wait for, yeah, I, I don't know what they're waiting on. They're waiting for like these huge events in their lives and, you know, what big thing is coming. But are you looking at the little stuff that happens every day in your life? Because we have to celebrate the little stuff because the big stuff doesn't happen very often. You know, I and mean, it can be a letdown too when it does happen. It's like, oh, I was waiting, waiting, and then it's here. And then it's like, oh, yeah. They've, <laughs> they've studied the dopamine release of Disneyland when you're planning for Disneyland. Your dopamine release of planning for Disneyland or fill in the vacation is almost always greater than when you're there almost always greater than when you're there i'm like wow yeah so i've been to disney i understand that <laughs> <laughs> mickey's not that great no no it's like <laughs> well it's hot then you get in the crowds and you're like oh yeah yeah shoot me yeah okay so you have this whole next venture going on and you're partnering up to some level with Timmy and Courtney. So your cohorts. So that's amazing. Looking forward to seeing what you're going to be releasing that. And uh, I'll be tagging you in this interview so that people that resonate with your message and just your story, they can connect with you. Is that fine if they do? That would be wonderful. I would love yeah. that. Okay. Well, let's end the broadcast here. We'll keep chatting. But if you've been watching Empower Network TV, April Childers, and uh, what a joy you are to dream big, like dream big, play and dream, man, all day long. And thanks for telling us the story of your time in the service and, <laughs> and, and Buck snorts. Buck, Buck snort. snort. <laughs> you know, like a snort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you're going on. You're to new heights. Here you go. You may have been in the Navy, but now you're in the Air Force. So you're just going up, girl. <laughs> this is amazing. Okay, well, we'll call it here. Thanks, everyone, for watching. All right.